Oh, hello and welcome to this video about the Roman excavations of the bathhouse just north of Carlisle city centre. The excavations are taking place at Carlisle Cricket Ground. Amazingly, the excavations are now visible on Google Earth. So it's probably best to give you a little bit of background information. The excavation site itself just sits slightly south of the fort of Oxalenum, also known as Petriana, and that itself is built into Hadrian's Wall. Hadrian's Wall itself was built around about AD 122 by the Emperor Hadrian, hence the name. We actually have the names of four of the western forts on the wall itself, and they can be found on the Staffordshire Moorlands Pan, which was a 2nd century Roman souvenir. New building work was taking place in the area where the bathhouse now stands, and an excavation was commissioned to take a look at what was down there. Earlier exploratory work had already revealed a Roman inscription, so it was promising when the site was reopened, but the amount of remains was simply staggering once the archaeologists got to work. Quickly it was discovered that extensive stone robbing had gone on on site, especially in the periods during the border wars when stone for walling and defences was much in demand. However, islands of excellent Roman archaeology still survived below the surface. Parts of a hypercost was discovered with their telltale red stacked tiles to allow the hot air to run underneath the raid floor. Also painted wall plaster was discovered. The first of many intaglios were also found that had fallen out of rings by people using the bathhouse. In fact, painstaking sieving of the silt from the drains has created one of the largest collections of intaglios in the UK. It became very obvious during excavation this was no ordinary military bathhouse. Several clues such as the inscription possibly to Julia Domna, the Empress to Septimius Severus was found in the remains. Also tiles with Imperium stamped in them. Excavation and evidence showed this was no ordinary bathhouse. This had to be sanctioned from the very top. Roman writers tell us that Septimius Severus, the Emperor, came to Britain in AD 208 to campaign against the Caledonians. He also brought his wife, the Empress Julia Domna, and also his sons Gita and Caracalla. So it's entirely possible the bathhouse could have been created for them. It's tempting to think the Roman Empire was governed briefly from a small provincial city in northern Britannia. So with permissions and funding in place in September 2021, a season of archaeology started on the site. The old tennis courts were cleared away and work could begin. One of the first features to appear in the new dig was a beautifully preserved Roman road running across the site. It's thought that this could be a spur road running off the Stangate Roman Road which begins its life in Corbridge and runs parallel to Hadrian's Wall as far as Carlisle. Slowly but surely the hypercost was revealed in the heart of the building, also more tiles, many with the imperial stamps on them. Amongst the debris on site were found clay vaulting tubes. These slotted together, formed a curve, and made a very lightweight roof for the bathhouse. It's a system of building found in many Roman buildings in North Africa. So did Severus bring an African architect with him to work on the bathhouse? It's an intriguing thought. Many trenches were opened up across the site to investigate the size and complexity of the bathhouse. The digging was done mainly by volunteers led by senior archaeologists from Wardle Armstrong. It's very much a community project and it's a fantastic thing to be part of. The site has revealed many finds such as Roman coins, some in very good condition. We also have uh, Samian and that came from southern Gaul patterned and decorated. The team also found T-shaped brackets and this would have been used to tie the walls together. Also in the assemblage were box flue tiles. These ran up the wall and pushed hot air all the way up to the ceiling. Once again the imperial stamps with IMP for Imperium were also found on site as part of the hypercost. At the north end of the site, the team started to find a lot more robbing pits. Plenty of finds coming up as well, though. 
Drains to the northwest of the main building started to appear. Plenty of soot around indicating this may have been where the stoke holes were to fire it. Keeping a place like this warm must have required a huge amount of timber. The bathhouse in London at Billingsgate is thought to have taken at least a, an area the size of Hyde Park just to keep it fired. The excavation and the finds here generated plenty of interest. We had boarded television here one evening to do a report. Investigations of the Roman road continued and the trench was widened. Little did the team know the stone heads would be found just a season or two later, just a few feet away. One of the remits of the project was to socially interact with the locals and visitors to the site. In this case, Tully House Museum put on a finds tent, also did guided tours twice a day. As September wore on, more and more medieval robbing pits were exposed. Also, section of walls from several different Roman periods started to appear. It became obvious to the archaeologists that the building had been tiered all the way up the hillside with different levels of flooring and walls heading up towards the main road, which sadly remain out of reach for uh, the current archaeological programme. More amazing finds continued to be discovered, including this Roman candlestick, also a sheet of Roman window pane broken into several fragments. It's now thought the building is almost 50 metres by 50 metres, but the edges still haven't been defined. Maybe next year's archaeological discoveries will give us the edge to this building. A coin was found on the Roman road surface showing that the road was still in use over a thousand years later. This amphora was left in the wall of the trench throughout the entire season, but more on that later. The building began life in the early 3rd century and continued in use until at least the mid 4th century. By that time the hypercost had gone out of use and the floor had been filled in with rubble. At some point in the later period, someone had tried to keep the hypergust going with its rather crude adaptation of the system. By late September, the autumn was really starting to take hold with shorter days. More of the robbed out walls started to appear at the northern end of the trench. Some substantial sizes showing that the bathhouse was built to at least two storeys. As a team dug deeper, they started to discover fragments of an earlier Hadrianic building, possibly the bathhouse, still surviving in small islands. Sections of the Severan drains survived in marvellous condition, beautifully engineered with flagged floors, beautifully lined walls and also flagged topped with heavy slabs of sandstone. back to the amphora which was finally lifted and shown after cleaning to have had graffiti marks and a makers or a producer's stamp on the handle.
One of the last sections of the site to close was the south drain. And from here, careful sieving revealed bone pins, also plenty of intaglios. We should get here, yeah, they're old here first. That black can't seal this drain. Oh, is that? I visited the site briefly in summer 22 whilst making another video. It seemed quite sad to see the site covered up and in fact we didn't think the site was going to reopen at all but things were about to change. It was great to see the team back again for one week's excavation in December. Plenty of sieving and lots of drains to look at. To start, the top layers of the site are machined away mechanically, but then it's down to sheer physical hard labour. You can see the overburden of soil on top of the Roman drains here, more of which would be revealed in 2023. This time in 2023 it was a summer dig back looking for more Roman archaeology on site. Once again the Roman road was uncovered and this gave a sense of orientation to everybody on site. As the trench walls were pushed back on the Roman road dig from the previous year, two stone heads suddenly emerged from the side of the trench. The heads, now thought to represent theatre masks, were very crudely carved and one of them was a reused altar. You can just see the remains of the older relief just coming into shot now. The experts think the stone heads may have stood on the corners of the building quite high up. It was a real privilege to actually see them back on site where they were originally discovered. You can see how extensive the excavation was in 2023. Not all the areas excavated in 2021 were reinvestigated. They've been recorded and backfilled. In the foreground, you can see the drain that was being excavated in December 2022. You can see in the footage the number of pits and stumps of walls visible. This is all the remains of medieval robbing pits with Roman walls interspersed between them. It's a very complicated site and I'm not glad I'm not the one who's having to interpret it all. Once again the team was led by professional archaeologists from Wardell Armstrong Archaeology. Also a huge team of volunteers, many who've been with the project since 2017. Yeah, 
The Roman drains have probably provided the richest source of finds anywhere on site. Looking at the spread of material, it's obvious that men, women and children all use the bathhouse at one time or another during its life. So the team came back again in November 2023 for a somewhat chillier dig, this time uncovering the southern half of the Roman road looking at what lay to the south. The team of archaeologists and volunteers uncovered a large area of paving, there was also post pads for timber buildings, an old quernstone had been used as a hearth, probably in the late Roman period. Just this short excavation in November 2023 just showed what was still to be discovered in future seasons of digging. So it's exciting to think that the team plus volunteers will be back this summer of 2024 to explore more of what lies around the Roman bathhouse and uncovering more of Roman Carlisle. A special mention must go out to all those who sieved buckets and buckets of mud from the drains to find the intaglios and small finds. Also to the post excavation teams who washed and then catalogued all the finds coming off site. So it just remains from me to thank everyone on site for putting up with me and allowing me to film and visit the site as much as I have. Also, if you could give us a big thumbs up and a subscribe, it helps me create more content. Thank you.